Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The fates, they say, weave the pattern of our lives. Some there are who believe that whatever happens to us is destined so to be, while others talk of free will. However it may be, certainly there is one element that touches all our lives, the element of the unexpected. How often have you asked, why did this happen to me? Rarely, if ever, have you found a satisfactory answer. So it was one fatal night with Nell Pearson, Mrs. Nell Pearson, widow, whose life was about to be shattered by unimaginable, unexpected horror. Our mystery drama, The Lodger, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You've been hearing some pretty lavish claims recently about miles per gallon. We'd like you to consider something equally important, and that's range. Range is the miles per gallon multiplied by the number of gallons your car's tank holds. Range is what makes the Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. Hello, this is Goldilocks. It seems like only yesterday that I was a little girl tasting porridge. You know, this one's too hot. This one's too cold. And now I conduct taste tests on diet drinks. And there's one I must tell you about. Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. It has a fresh, natural, delicious taste. It drives my taste meter crazy. Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. <gasps> this one's just right. Dreaming about becoming richer? Why not wake up richer every day? At Suburban Savings in North Jersey, getting richer is an everyday reality. Because Suburban has put into effect higher effective returns. Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate has an annual effective yield of 7.90%. And Suburban guarantees it from 4 to 10 years with a minimum investment of $2,500. You'll sleep a lot more soundly knowing your savings are earning more money at Suburban Savings. So sleep on Suburban's higher effective return tonight and come into any of Suburban's convenient offices tomorrow in Bayonne, Edgewater, Elmwood Park, Emerson, Hackettstown, Morris Plains, Nutley, Paramus, and Sparta. Early withdrawal prior to maturity is according to regulations subject to a substantial penalty. The fates brought unexpected horror that night to Nell Pearson's house on 9th Street, where she rented rooms. Yet one wonders, was it altogether unexpected? Could the frightful things that happened have been avoided had she been more alert, say, more sensitive to warnings of impending tragedy? No matter now. What matters is that earlier that day, in the afternoon, she had no idea that death, in its most grisly form, was shortly to enter her house. Oh, my goodness, Mrs. Pearson. Oh, my goodness. What is it, Miss May? The headlines, look. Ripper strikes again. Oh, oh good heavens, that's awful, perfectly awful. Read it, Mrs. Pearson, read it. I am. No, no, out loud, I mean, I want to hear. But you just finished reading. Well, all right. The Ripper claimed another victim last night. Thursday night. Thursday. He always kills on a Thursday. This time, another attractive widow, Mrs. Henry Dodd. Always a widow. Always a widow. Miss Mapes, please. The body, gruesomely slashed and mutilated, was discovered by a neighbor who, hearing Mrs. Dodd's hysterical screams, rushed to her apartment. There she found the comely young widow lying in a pool of blood. Oh. <laughs> And a message scrawled in red lipstick across one wall. Stop me. Please stop me. Uh, excuse me, Miss Pearson. Uh, which windows you want washed first? Oh, uh, oh, I don't know, Charlie. You want to get to that today? 
Man, it's kind of warm out. I thought it'd be a good time to get started on them. Well, you decide, Charlie. Suit yourself. There's been another one, Charlie. Another what, Miss Mapes? Murder by the Ripper. Another widow, like always. You don't say. That makes a fifth, don't it? A fifth in five weeks. One a week for the past five weeks, and always on a Thursday night between 11 and 12, and always a widow. Oh, I better change my night out. <laughs> what do you mean, Charlie? Yeah, well, uh, Thursday's my night out, and you're a widow, Miss Pearson. You never know, the police might start putting two and two together. Oh, and... Charlie, you and your jokes. I don't think that one's particularly funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Pearson. It's just funny, that's all. Well, take your fun out on those windows. All right, getting right to it, Miss Pearson. I'm getting right to it. Maybe he wasn't joking, Charlie. Not joking? Well, Thursday is his night out, and you are a widow, and, well, who knows? Oh, Miss Mapes, if I had your imagination... I... Oh, excuse me. Yes? How do you do? Uh, my name is Tony Adams. I saw your sign rooms, wondered if you had a vacancy, maybe. Oh, well, yes, yes, I do. Won't you come in? Thank you. I have a room on the second floor front. It's, it's very spacious, light and airy, too. Fine, I'll take it. You haven't even seen it. I've seen you. <laughs> I don't go with the room, Mr. Adams. Oh, sorry. I meant it as a compliment, not a proposition. I'll show you the room. This way. May I ask your name? Uh, Pearson. Uh, Mrs. Eleanor Pearson. Nell. You've been in town long, Mr. Adams? Oh, no. A few weeks I've been staying at a hotel, but, well, I never did like hotel living. Oh, what do you do? Reporter. I'm a reporter on the City Sentinel. Oh, that must be interesting. My husband always said newspaper work must be fascinating. What did he do? Uh, the room's this way. Why, uh, he was a riveter. Uh, you know, putting in beams on new skyscrapers. Dangerous work. You've been a widow very long. Oh, it's close to three years now that... How do you know I'm a widow? <laughs> Don't look so surprised. For one thing, you talk about your husband in the past tense, and for another, you're not wearing a wedding ring, and... Well, rooming houses are run by widows more often than not. Oh, you're very observant. I'm a reporter, and that's my job. Yes, I suppose it is. Uh, here, here's the room. Fine, just fine. You haven't seen it. You're not even looking at it. Why look at a room when I can look at you? Uh, Mr. Adams, let's get something straight. I've had more than one male boarder make a pass at me, and everyone found himself out on the street in short order, bag and baggage. Now, if you're after a room, fine. But if you're after something else... Ah, oh, come on now, Nell. Uh, Mrs. Pearson, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. I've got to get back to the paper. See you later. But you you haven't even asked the price. It'll be okay, whatever it is. It's $80 a week, including breakfast and dinner. Whatever you say, Nell, whatever you say. Well, I never... Doesn't look at the room, doesn't care about the price, just drops his top coat on the bed and he's off. Well, I'd better hang his coat in the closet. It'll get all creased. Oh, no, what was that? Fell out of his pocket. Rolled under the bed. Would roll under the bed, of course. Make me get down on my knees and... Boy. Why, it's... It's a lipstick. What in the world would he be doing with a lipstick? <laughs> Oh, now, why did you go and turn the TV set off, Charlie? You know I like to see who played what. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Mapes. I forgot. Pretty good movie, huh? Oh, it was all right. You like it, Miss Pearson? Uh, what? What'd you say, Charlie? Well, I just asked if you liked the movie. How could she? She didn't even see it. Well, of course I did. Well, you may have been looking at it for two hours, Mrs. Pearson, but you certainly weren't seeing it. You were thinking of something else. Well, me, I saw it, and I liked it. Oh, 10.30. Well, I'm off to bed. Oh, by the way, I finished the window washing today, Miss Pearson. Oh, good. I'm glad they only got to be washed twice a year. It's a big job. <laughs> it took a whole week. Well, good night. Night. Uh, good night, Charlie. 
Uh, Mrs. Pearson, now I'm not one to pry, but why don't you tell me what's bothering you? Bothering me? Now, you know something has been bothering you since that Mr. Adams arrived. Now, when was it now? That was, well, this is Thursday, and he took the second floor front la Friday it was, mm hmm Now, I'll tell you something. You, you just... You haven't been the same since. Oh, it's nothing, Miss Mapes. Nothing at all. Now, you don't fool me. Something's worrying you. I know it is. Oh, I might as well tell you. It's... It's this. Why? Well, it's a lipstick. Why should a lipstick upset you? Well, it was in his pocket the day he arrived. His top coat pocket. It fell out when I picked the coat up. So? It's the same color, Mandarin Scarlet. The Ripper uses to scrawl those awful messages with... Oh, and you think... Oh, you don't think he's the Ripper? Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. Well, then why the worry? I... I don't know. It just, just bothers me a little, that's all. And now, if you're all that worried, you could... Or maybe you did check on him? Check on him? Oh, find out if he really does work for the city sentinel and, and like that. You could call the paper. Oh, I'm just being silly, that's all. Of course you are. Mountains out of molehills. Well, I'm off for bed. Oh, are you sleeping better since we exchanged rooms? You've no idea. The traffic isn't anywhere near so loud. But what about you? Oh, I don't mind it. I told you that months ago. I know, and I thank you. Stop worrying now, and... Oh, here's the lipstick. <laughs> I certainly don't want it. Oh, good night. Good night, my dear. Sleep well. I wonder... Oh, um, uh, hello, uh, City Sentinel? Uh, I I'd like to speak to Mr. Tony Adams, please. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, I, I wonder if you could tell me, has he been with the Sentinel long? Six weeks? Uh, thank you very much. Six weeks. It was just six weeks ago on a Thursday, just... Six weeks ago today that the Ripper... <coughs> Miss Mapes! Oh, my God! <coughs> Charlie! Charlie, where are you? Oh, heaven help me, I have to go up myself. Miss Mapes! Miss Mapes! Oh, Charlie! Good Lord, Miss Pearson, was that Miss Mapes screaming? Yes, yes! Well, uh, don't hear nothing now. It came from a room. Well, Charlie, I don't dare open the door. Yeah, well, I guess I'll have to then. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> Blood. Blood all over. Hey, hey Miss Mapes, look. No, no, don't look. Oh, God. It's the work of the Ripper. Oh, my Lord. I've never seen no one slashed up so bloody. The the mirror, Charlie. Look at the mirror. Uh, words. Words scrawled in red. Lipstick. Mandarin scarlet lipstick. Stop me before I kill again. Oh, they must. They must stop him. Let's get right down to the living room and phone the police. Yes. Oh, yes. The, the front door at this hour? I'll go. Oh, Mr. Adams. Hello, Charlie. Sorry I bothered you. Forgot my key. Hello, Nell. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Pearson. I know. Why the stairs? <laughs> Can't be the first rumor who forgot his key. Mr. Adams. Oh, my Lord, Mr. Adams. I... What is it? Upstairs. Upstairs. Upstairs what? Oh, never mind. I'll see for myself. The police... Let's call him, Miss Pearson. Miss Pearson. Did you... Charlie, did, did you... Miss Pearson, what is it? The look on his face when he saw me standing here. Did you see the look on his face? 
Well, yeah. I couldn't figure why we were staring at him. He couldn't figure out how I could be standing here. Huh? What? She's been killed by the Ripper. Miss Mapes killed by the Ripper, and he always kills widows. Hey. Yeah, come think of it, that don't make no sense. It does if you remember that we changed rooms. Miss Pearson. Miss Pearson, are you saying that the Ripper mistook Miss Mapes for you? Oh, I'm the only widow in this house, Charlie. Come on, let's call the cops. Yeah, operator, the, the police. Give me the police. Put that phone down, Charlie. Uh, Mr. Adams, what do you... Give me the phone. Uh, Charlie, no, the police. Yeah, yeah, uh, hello, this is Give Charlie. me that phone. So, weaving their pattern of the unexpected... The fates bring together on this fearsome night an innocent spinster named Miss Mapes and the Ripper, who mistook her for Nell Pearson. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. When you feel like having a cold Budweiser, do you automatically reach for a glass? Well, sure, Bud's a great beer any way you drink it. But without a glass, you're really missing something. Now, take that wonderful Budweiser head of foam, for instance. Those bubbles, tiny though they are, still amount to something pretty special at the top of your glass. Taste appeal and eye appeal. Two results of exclusive beechwood aging and natural carbonation. It takes a lot longer to brew Budweiser that way. But brewing beer right does make a difference that you can taste. That's why when you say Budweiser, you've really said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Hey, Mom, what's for dinner? Hey, Mom, what you got? Here's ShopRite's suggestion for a delightful cookout dish. Boneless top round or sirloin tip steaks, just $1.69 a pound. Delicious cooked over the coals, just as delicious pan broiled indoors. For a busy night, here's a quick dinner idea. Freezer Queen family size frozen casseroles. All varieties except beef, just 99 cents for the two-pound size at ShopRite. For dessert, Pepperidge Farm layer cake, 17-ounce box, 69 cents in ShopRite's frozen food case. Cooking out or cooking in, ShopRite has the answer. She loves the family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. Guess I ought to call old blowhard Gildersleeve to tell him about my new radio show. <laughs> Wait till he hears that his old pal Fibber McGee's got a new radio program. That'll really burn him up, the old goat. <laughs> when he finds out I'm going to play some great old radio shows like Ed Wynn, Mr. District Attorney, even Bob Hope, old Gildy will bust a gasket. Fibber McGee in part four of his special program, The Good Old Days of Radio, will be heard tonight at 9 o'clock right here over WOR Radio, The Talk of New York. Mrs. Nell Pearson feels that she's about to faint as she sees her new boarder, Tony Adams, grab the telephone away from Charlie, the handyman, break the connection with police headquarters, and then begin to dial another number furiously. Charlie stands as if turned to stone. Nell grabs the back of a chair for support as... Give me the city desk. Hank Adams. The ripper is struck again. Time, 11.15... Place, 129th Street, rooming house owned by Mrs. Eleanor Pearson Widow. What? No, 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 not her, one of her boarders. A Miss Mapes. Oh, we must have made a mistake. Hank, I know, I know, but it isn't a widow this time. Now stop talking and take this, will you? In one of the ghastliest, bloodiest murders he's yet committed, the Ripper slashed his sixth victim. <laughs> Sorry, 
I had to grab the phone out of your hand, Charlie, but a scoop's a scoop. Uh, yeah, sure. Now, give me your stories. We'll start with you, Nell. Tell me, what happened? Oh, Nell, come now. Snap out of it. Stop staring at me and tell me what happened. I... I heard her scream. She screamed and screamed and screamed. Where were you? Here, right here. She'd just gone up to bed. What were you doing? I had just telephoned, um, someone. Then the, the screams began, and, and I ran upstairs, and Charlie was there on the landing, and we went into her room, and there, there she was. She... I've got to sit down. Now, what's the matter? Let me help Don't you. Don't touch me! Okay, okay. All right, Charlie, let, let's have it from you. Oh, well, uh... Like Miss Pearson says, I heard Miss Mabe screaming and went running to see what was going on. You must have moved fast. Your room was in the basement, isn't it? Oh, oh, well, I wasn't in my room. I, I was in Miss Pearson's room, just across Miss Mapes. What were you doing in Mrs. Pearson's room? Uh, yes, what, what, what were you doing there? Uh, well, uh... You remember when you changed rooms with Miss Mapes a couple of days ago? Yes. And there was that leak in the bathroom and I fixed it? Yes. And I just went up to check on us all. I didn't know you changed rooms, Nell. No. You didn't, did you? That would account for... Why don't you say it? The Ripper mistook Miss Mapes for me. Because he didn't know about the change of rooms. You were lucky, Nell. Very. This time. Now, please, please, Mrs. Pearson, we're here to help you at police headquarters. And I understand why you're worried. It is possible the Ripper mistook Miss Mapes for you. He did. He did. Yes, but now there seems to be something else on your mind. Something to do with, uh, one of your boarders, you say? His name is Tony Adams. He's a reporter on the City Sentinel. Well, he rented a room at my place just a week ago today. That was the day after the last murder. Ah, uh, yes, I know. Well, but... after he rented the room, he left to go to the newspaper, and I, I picked up his top coat to hang it in the closet, and this fell out. A lipstick? Yes. Mandarin scarlet. The same color the Ripper uses. To scrawl those horrible messages like... Last night on the wall of Miss Mapes' room. Well, it seems to me you're letting your fears run away with you, building up a case in your mind. Well, what about last night? He just happened to come home minutes after the murder, he says. And you think... I think he was lying. I think he killed Miss Mapes, left by the fire escape at the end of the second floor corridor, and then pretended he'd just arrived home. Claimed he'd forgotten his key. So he'd have a witness to prove an alibi if he needed one. Well, it's clever thinking, if that's so. He's a clever man. Believe me, he is. And I'm afraid of him, Lieutenant. Terribly afraid. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. The managing editor of the Sentinel is a good friend of mine. Let me just give him a ring and check on this Tony Adams. interesting. Your friend Mr. Adams was hired away from another paper, a Metropolitan Daily, because of the record of scoops he'd built up in a little more than a year. Scoops? Oh, that means... He always managed somehow to be on the scene of the crime first. An unusual record. A most unusual record. You think... Oh, I know what you think. He committed the crime so he could get the scoop. No, 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 I didn't say that, Mrs. Pearson. But that's what you're thinking. Well, either he's a remarkable police reporter or... Or he's the Ripper. Lieutenant, I want protection. You've got to protect me. I want a policeman in my house night and day until that Ripper is caught. Tell me, do you have a room available in your house? Well, uh, well, th there's Miss Mapes' room. Why? Well, look, don't hold me to this. What with one thing and another, we're short-handed right now, but if I sent one of my men to act like he was a boarder... Oh, I'd make room for him. You can be sure of that. Hello, 
Oh, Nell. Charlie said I'd find you down here in the laundry room. Oh, what is it, Mr. Adams? What do you want? Uh, one thing I want is for you to call me Tony. One thing I want for you is to stop calling me Nell. Oh, come on. What have you got against me? Look, Mr. Adams, I've got a lot of work to do. Well, not much sense asking you now. What is it? Why, well, I was going to ask if you'd like to go to the movies with me. I figured that'd be your answer. What other answer would you expect? There was a murder in this house last night, a gruesome murder. Not only that, but the victim was a friend of mine. And you have the, the indecency to ask me to go to a movie with you? Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way, only... Look, I wish we could be friendlier, that's all. I'll level with you now. Excuse me, Mrs. Pearson. I've been thinking of settling down for some time now. So I've been looking around, you know, keeping my eyes open. From the minute they fell on you, Mrs. Pearson. Oh, no, damn it, Nell, listen to me. Take your hands off me. I don't call laying my hands on your arm exactly putting my hands on you. Don't touch me. Don't even touch me. What is it with you? Well, don't just stand there looking at me. What is it? I just want to be left alone. You just want to be left alone or you just want to be left alone by me? Answer me. By you. Sorry. I won't trouble you again. Good night. What are you doing there? Charlie. I come down to tell you somebody upstairs looking for a room. A uh, man or woman? Man. Oh, well, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Adams. How long were you standing there, Charlie? Me? I just come down. Why? Nothing, Charlie. Nothing. Uh, how do you do? I, I'm Mrs. Pearson, the landlady. Uh, my name is Bowen, Lawrence Bowen. Uh, I saw your sign out front. I wondered if you had a vacancy. Uh, yes, I do. A, a bed sitting room. W would you care to see it? If it's not too much trouble. Oh, no trouble at all, if you follow me. Um, did um, anyone recommend you here, Mr. Bowen? Well, uh, no. I couldn't say I was recommended, although... Uh, yes? Uh, well, you might say I, uh, I heard what happened here last night, and I... Well, that's why I'm here. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, here we are. Uh, this is the room. So this is where it happened? Yes. Huh. What a shame to die like that. Uh, and maybe you could fill me in on some things, uh... I got a lot from Lieutenant Golan, but I'd like to hear your side of things. Uh, well, it's like this, Mr. Bowen. Is uh, Mr. All right? Or, or should I call you Sergeant or something like that? Oh, I uh, better keep it Mr. Oh, I understand. Uh, did Lieutenant Goldman tell you about my finding the lipstick? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, where did you find it? Well, I didn't find it, actually. It, it fell out of Mr. Adams' pocket. And, of course, when I saw it was Mandarin Scarlet, my suspicions were aroused right then and there. Yeah, same shade of lipstick the Ripper uses to write his messages. Uh, you found the lipstick and that aroused your suspicions. In other words, you think he could be the Ripper. I'm practically sure he is. Which is his room? Uh, right there, the, that front room at the end of the corridor. I'd like to have a look at that. Is he out of the house? Oh, he may be, uh, though he was downstairs just a little while ago. I wouldn't want him to find me in his room. Uh, maybe you could check and find out. Oh, of course, I'll do that. Now, be careful. Don't say or do anything to make him suspect. Oh, I won't. I, I won't. Oh, uh, Charlie, wh where's Mr. Adams? Uh, yeah, in the sitting room. He said he's going to write some letters. Oh. Was something wrong, Miss Pearson? You act upset. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not upset. Not, not, not in the least. Thank you, Charlie. I... Oh, you've finished writing your letters. Huh? Yes. How did you know I was writing letters? I... Oh, I... I well, I noticed you're, you're holding some letters in your hand. I, I assumed you'd just written them. Naturally. 
naturally. And now I'm going out and uh, naturally post them. Say, what's, uh... <laughs> That's none of my business, I guess, but... You two at each other's throats or something? As you say, Charlie, none of your business. He's gone. He just went out to mail some letters. How long will it take him? Well, the nearest box is uh, two blocks away, at least five minutes. Have you got a key to his room? A master key, yes. Have it right here. Have to move fast, but go ahead. Open his door. Now, while I'm looking around, you better go to the head of the stairs and keep an eye out for him. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Suitcase. It's open. Good. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! That does it. Uh, Mrs. Pearson! Uh, come here a moment. Yes? Have a look inside his suitcase. What? Lipsticks. Three, four, six of them. And all of them, Mandarin Scarlet. Then I... Then I was right. You were more than right. You were smack on target. And look here, under these shirts. <gasps> I got a knife. A long knife. Butcher's knife, Mrs. Pearson. The knife, I'm sure, that was used on all six victims. Oh, Lord, be with us. What... Look, what are you going to do? For the moment, Nothing. Nothing? You're not going to arrest him? Well, we could arrest him. I don't think we'd be able to hold him. Evidence like this, it's purely circumstantial. When we nail this bird, we want to nail him for good. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you ought to talk to Lieutenant Goldman and get his opinion. I will. You can depend on that. And I'll do it, Mrs. Pearson, not you. Well, I don't understand. If Adams is planning to murder you, he's keeping tabs on you. So don't try to contact the lieutenant in any way. Leave all that to me. Oh, very well, I, I will. Oh, Mr. Bowen, I can't tell you how glad I am you're here. There's no question about it now. He is the Ripper. He, he was planning... He is planning to, to kill me. Well, he won't. I'll see to that. And that's a promise. <laughs> Protected by Mr. Bowen, Nell Pearson feels safe. Well, safer than she did. But all too often, the fates are at work weaving, ever weaving, the unexpected. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your allergy. <laughs> to contact Now listen carefully because this message may surprise you There is an ingredient that can effectively help block pollen's bad effect on your system Sneezing, sniffling, drips, itchy, red, watery eyes It's the antihistamine most prescribed by allergy specialists and it's an ingredient in contact Surprising, yes, but the true wonder of contact is how our tiny time pills keep this antihistamine working helping up to 12 hours per capsule all day, all night. Allergy is our business, too. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your allergy to contact. Take contact only when needed, only as directed. Introducing the greatest taste to come out of your toaster since Samuel Bath Thomas baked his original English muffins in 1880. Thomas's new onion English muffins. Little bits of real onion blended into Thomas's original English muffin recipe create a tangy taste that makes everything fantastic, like burgers and cream cheese and cold cuts. Even butter tastes better. Thomas's new onion English muffins. The greatest new taste since 1880. Thomas's promises. Hey, Pat! How tall do you think she is? 300 feet if she's an inch, Luigi, and a fine lady she is. The year 1886. While most New Yorkers were enjoying their first look at the Statue of Liberty, a few were enjoying their first taste of Thomas's bread and discovering it was every bit as delicious as Thomas's English muffins. Today, there's still never been a lady to equal the lady or a bread to equal Thomas's protein, whole wheat, and white bread. Thomas's promises. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet, much yellow. Well, maybe it's a bit sweet, Sophia. On second thought, I love its bitterness. 
Ponte Nez. Is it bitter? Is it sweet? People have been arguing about it since 1786. Ponte Nez, a lovely before lunch or dinner drink from Italy. On the rocks or with soda and a slice of orange. Ponte Nez, capital P-U-N-T, little e, capital M-E-S. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. All right, Sophia, it's bitter. No, my darling, let's just say it's bittersweet. Like life, like love, like marriage, Italian style. Punte mes, punte mes. Reported by Carolyn Importers Limited, New York, New York. With Officer Bowen in the house to protect her, or perhaps I should say Mr. Bowen, Nell Pearson seemingly has nothing to fear. But note that I say seemingly, and having noticed it, let's move on, you and I, to the dining room in Mrs. Pearson's rooming house some days later. In fact, the evening of the following Thursday. Delicious meal, Mrs. Pearson, as always. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Sure is. Uh... Oh, Mr. Bowen. Yes. I hope you won't mind my asking. I haven't had the chance before, but do you mind telling me what you do for a living? A salesman. Insurance. Oh? You sound surprised. No, no. No, not really, except... Oh, I'd have thought you were in something that keeps you outdoors a lot of the time. In your ruddy complexion. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Building trades, maybe. A foreman of some kind of outdoor crew. A policeman, even. All oh. right. Sorry, it slipped. No, I'm insurance salesman, Mr. Adams. And that does get me out and around a lot, you know. I suppose it does, yeah. Uh, you're a reporter, a crime reporter, I hear. Mm-hmm. Are you involved in this ripper business? Very much. Been involved in nothing else since I came here to join the Sentinel. Do you or uh, do the police have any idea what he's like, uh, the kind of man he is, what makes him commit these terrible murders? Well, we do and we don't, I... Well, what I mean, everything we know is conjecture, theory. No one has ever laid eyes on him, except his victims, of course, so we can't be sure that the picture we've built up is close to the truth or not. Still, it ought to be fairly accurate as far as it goes. Well, how far does it go? I mean, uh, what is your picture of him? Well, we estimate he's between 5 foot 11 and 6 feet. We get that from the height of his victims and the downward direction of some of the knife thrusts. Must we talk about the Ripper at the dinner table? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Bowen asked. And... Uh, well, there must be something else you can talk about. After, after all, there has been a murder in this house, and it was the Ripper, and, and this is Thursday, and the, the night that he commits these terrible crimes, and... Well, really. Oh, Nell, I, 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 I am sorry. Me too, Mrs. Pierce. I'm awfully sorry. It's all right. Just stop talking about it. I certainly won't. It is Thursday night, and that means I've got to stake myself out at police headquarters. I'm going to be right in the scene, is that it? I'm always on the scene, Mr. Bowen. It's my job. <laughs> well, here we are, Mr. Bowen. Come in. Well, now... This is very nice. Very comfortable, Mrs. Pearson. I can't understand why Miss Mapes, poor woman, wanted to change rooms with you. Well, the noise of the traffic bothered her. Well, no traffic noise that I can hear. Oh, that's because it's so late. It's nearly 11, but Miss Mapes usually went to bed quite early. I see. Better lock the door, Mrs. Pearson. Oh, but with you here to protect me? Well, the fewer chances we take, the better. Oh, well, I'll lock it. Then. Good. Ah, well, all we have to do is just sit and wait. Till midnight, that is. After midnight, you'll be safe. At least till next Thursday. <sighs> you mind if I turn on the TV? Oh, of course not. Why should I? Well, you'll want to read your newspaper you brought, won't you? No, not necessarily. I thought I might kill time while waiting, but... No, go ahead. Go ahead, turn it on. We can catch the 11 o'clock news when it... Oh, uh, excuse me. Hello? Mrs. Pearson? Yes. This is Lieutenant Goldman, police headquarters. Oh, yes. I just wanted to let you know you have nothing to worry about tonight. Oh, I'm sure I don't. I feel perfectly safe. You'll feel even safer when Officer Randolph gets there. Did you hear me, Mrs. Pearson? Why, 
Why, no. What did you say? I've sent one of my men, Officer Randolph, over to your place. He ought to be with you in about five or ten minutes. I'm very sorry I couldn't send anyone to stay with you through the week, but as I told you, we're short-handed. Do you understand? Mrs. Pearson? Uh, yes, I... I understand. Good. Don't worry now. Goodbye. Friend? What? Friend calling to see if you're okay? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, you are. All your worries will be over by midnight. Uh, would you... Would you like something to drink? Oh, no, no. Uh... I'd like a cup of coffee myself. I I'll just run down to the kitchen. No. I can't take a chance of letting you out of my sight, Mrs. Pearson. Not now. It's 11 o'clock. Time when the Ripper does his killing. Even though he doesn't want to. Doesn't, doesn't want to? No, he doesn't want to kill. He has to. How, how do you know? Why else would he scrawl those messages? Please stop me. Don't let me kill again. I always with the same kind of lipstick, Mandarin Scarlet. And why a lipstick? One of these. Why one of these? You, you're, you're... Yes? You're, you're the Ripper? I'm sorry to say that I am, Mrs. Pearson. I wish I weren't. Look, you, you, you don't have to be. You I do, I do. I can't help myself. I just can't. Right now, this minute, I know what I'm going to do. And I don't want to do it. But I know I won't be able to help myself. They must catch me, Mrs. Pearson. They must catch me. They must stop me. They are going to catch you tonight. There's a police officer on his way here now. He'll, he'll be at the front door any minute. But you won't be able to admit him. Someone will. Charlie will. I don't see how. What do you mean you don't see how? He'll ring the front doorbell and keep ringing until someone answers. No one will hear the doorbell, Mrs. Pearson. I disconnected it. <gasps> newspaper you brought. Not to read. To carry this. The knife. The butcher's knife. Oh, heaven help me. Heaven help me. <laughs> Goldman. Yes, send him in. Come in, Adam. Got a message you wanted to see me when I came in. Ah, uh, yeah. Coffee? Never turn it down. I just wanted to let you know I assigned a man to stay with Mrs. Pearson between 11 and midnight and another hour or so after that, just to be sure. Thanks a heap, Lieutenant. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think you're more worried about her than she was about herself. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, I'd have stayed with her myself if I didn't have to cover headquarters. And if she'd have let me. Let you? Well, for some reason or other, she won't have anything to do with me. Me, I go for her. She turns me on, you know what I mean? But I can't get to first base with her. You ready for a shock? Come on. I didn't tell you this before because I didn't get the chance. Too damn busy with one thing and another, including putting a check on you. I don't get you. I had you checked out up and down and sideways because, well, you're not going to believe this. Mrs. Pearson was convinced you were the Ripper. Nell Pearson thought I... Hey, excuse me. Goldman, no one answers. Well, that doesn't make any sense. She's there. I talked with her on the phone ten minutes ago. Tell him to try again. And tell him to make sure he's got the right house. Ah, these rookies. What? The guy I sent over to stay with Mrs. Pearson says nobody answers the doorbell. Not out of order, is it? How would I know? I, I've got a key. Maybe he went to the wrong house. Yeah, maybe. Look, you don't know what you're saying. I never tricked you. Oh, yes, you did. You say you changed rules with that Miss Mace because she wanted to. But what you were doing was tricking me. That's what... You're all alike, you widows. Vile, vile, vile. Please, please believe me. Believe you? Believe a widow? Never again. Never again. I believed one. I married her. But never again. You know what the Chinese say? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. 
I learned that from her. She was nuts about everything Chinese. Pagodas all over the house. Chinese screens. Parading around. She was always parading around with dresses slid up to here. Up to here. Even her lipstick. This Mandarin scarlet. Listen, listen to me. But I paid her back for what she did to me. I paid her back that night. That Thursday night. When I came home unexpectedly and found her. Her and him. He ran. He got away. But she didn't. Oh, she didn't. I got a knife from the kitchen, a butcher's knife, and I came into the bedroom and I slashed and stabbed and stabbed. And I ripped my door. I killed her once, and then again, and then again, and again. I killed her, as I'm going to kill you now. Please, oh, please. What do you want first, huh? A slash across the face, a slash across your beautiful lying face. It'll do you no good to run. They all tried that and they failed. No! 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 You now. Stand back, Adams. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Well, now are you all right? Oh, thank God you're here. Thank God. But, but how? The how? pop Lieutenant Goldwyn sent over said no one answered the doorbell. Seemed odd to me, so I decided to come over and check. Lieutenant Goldwyn came to. Oh, Tony, Tony. I'll take it easy now. Here. Sit down. That's it. Can you ever forgive me? I, I misjudged you so terribly, so terribly. <laughs> That's for sure. What about him, Lieutenant? He's gone. I hated to kill him, but I had no choice. And not the way he came at you, swinging that butcher knife. Hey, what are you doing? Calling the sentinel. What else? I've got another scoop. If you don't mind. Hey, what? Operator, give me police headquarters. Oh, well, that's gratitude. I lead you to the Ripper and you swindle me out of my scoop. You'll get your scoop. <laughs> and the way Mrs. Pearson is looking at you, I'll say you get another. Uh, hello, this is Goldman. Give me homicide. Well, I know. Uh, what? Chief. Tony? This is Lieutenant you Goldman. You know I've been crazy I about you Ripper. since I laid eyes on you. Yeah. You do right. know that. I, yes. No, he's dead. Yes, I guess I do. Well, look, that movie I asked you to go to, they've, they've held it over another week. Okay. Will you go with me some some night? I'd night. love to. Oh, any time. Any All night. Uh, but Thursday. Weaving and spinning, the fates create the warp and woof of our lives. And always through the pattern runs the scarlet thread of the unexpected. Sometimes for good, sometimes for evil. And make no mistake, as the unexpected awaited Nell Pearson, so it awaits you. Great taste in the morning, Kellogg's, Kellogg's has that wholesome taste to get you up and grinning. This is Jerry Coffer for Kellogg's Special K. We've been having some fun in our television and radio commercials by using a ball and chain to symbolize the slight overweight problem common to so many of us. We point out that being a few pounds overweight is just a little more difficult for you. Climbing stairs, just walking around, even sitting down can feel, well, like you're wearing a ball and chain. In case you missed the message, it's this. If you really want to get rid of that extra weight, you really have to work at it by exercising and with sensible meals like the Special K breakfast. A one-ounce bowl of Special K, America's favorite high-protein cereal, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee, less than 240 calories, nutritious, and by the way, delicious. So why not begin each day with a Special K breakfast and then keep up the good work? Special K can't help you lose weight all by itself, but it really is a good start. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally, taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I've just had to bear with it. Then I found Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes, this one's just right. Buick introduces a new concept for you to consider in light of all the concern about miles per gallon. Range. Range is what you get when you multiply the mileage your car gets per gallon by the number of gallons your car's gas tank holds. Range is one of the things that help make Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon gas tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. 
It's the Buick of small cars. America. We're big on that. New York, Denver, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Dallas, Fort Worth. Ozark's two-thirds transcontinental, serving more than 60 cities, all very important to us, and to the millions of people we serve each year. America. We're big on that at Ozark Airlines. Now go Ozark's evening jet at 645 to Washington with through service to Champaign, Urbana, and Peoria. I'm sure you'll want to know that Nell and Tony are married now. Tony's on his way to becoming managing editor of the Sentinel. And Nell, on her way to becoming a mother. And so the fates weave a happy ending. For once. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Michael Wager, Robert Dryden, Mary Jane Higby, and Joe Julian. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal, new sugar-free diet 7-Up, and Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... WR Mystery Theater has been brought to you by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. And by Suburban Savings, with offices throughout North Jersey. The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. At this moment in time, Jason, I'm a very friendly ghost, with warm feelings toward you. Because you're going to do me a favor, Jason. You are going to kill my wife. Did you hear me, Jason? I said you were going to kill Claire. I heard you, and I say you're a murderer. <laughs> I'm not a murderer. You <laughs> will kill her, Jason. Because this is just a sample of what can happen to you when my feelings become unfriendly. And that's our Mystery Theater program for tomorrow night. Be sure to tune in. Boy, if the old-timer Horatio K. Boomer and Wally Wimple could see me now. <laughs> Fibber McGee, back on the radio right here from 79 Westville Vista with a brand-new program where I'm going to bring back the great old radio shows from way back. Shows like Mr. Keene, Lum and Abner. Well, I guess I ought to get this place straightened up a bit, though. Where's that vacuum? Oh, I left it in the hall closet. Oh, look. Gangbusters, Duffy's Tavern, Mr. District Attorney are just some of the highlights of Fibber McGee's special program, The Good Old Days of Radio, tonight at 9.05, right here on WOR. I'm Fulton Lewis in the Mutual Broadcasting System studios in Washington, D.C. Now, my commentary. Uh, President Nixon, it appears, will continue to take his case to the public at large, thereby hoping to head off any impeachment drives that may develop on Capitol Hill. The posture of the White House, the president's official family, has been decidedly defensive these past few days. Repeatedly, White House officials have been asserting that Mr. Nixon is not going to quit. Those assertions being, of course, in response to calls from a growing number of congressional Republicans for the president's resignation. When charges of a specific nature have been leveled at Mr. Nixon, they have been answered promptly and firmly. Just today, for example... The White House charged that there has been, in its words, a concerted effort by some sources to circulate fallacious reports that the president has used ethnic slurs in private conversations. Deputy Press Secretary Gerald Warren agreed with White House lawyer J. Frez Fred Buzzhart's assertion yesterday that attempts are being made to try to poison the public's minds by charging that the slurs were deleted from the recently released Watergate transcripts 
Warren today commented, We have been aware for some time of a concerted effort by some sources, whoever they are, to get this fallacious story into print. He added that several newsmen have received reports on the alleged slurs and that it was, in Warren's words, clear to us that there was a concerted effort to get this into print, and it finally succeeded. He was referring to a story that was published Sunday in the New York Times. Publication of the charges, Warren contended, demonstrates the vindictiveness of some people that we have seen developing over the past few months, trying to discredit the president in any way possible. When asked why the White House did not release the actual sections of the tapes to support their denial that the president made ethnic slurs, Warren said that pressure for such a release of tapes is precisely what the purveyors of this sad story wanted to happen. Incidentally, my own White House sources, people who have been very, very close to the president for many years, insist that it is not only unlikely but almost inconceivable that Mr. Nixon would be guilty of making the comments which have been assessed to him by the New York Times. As one White House aide put it, the words, the references, I don't believe are even part of the president's vocabulary. His choice of language might get a little rough at times, but ethnic or religious or racial references are never incorporated into that roughness. That assessment, I might add, is very much in line with my own knowledge of Mr. Nixon, which dates back also many years. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. The proof of this pudding could well come when Peter Rodino, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, and Representative Hutchinson, the ranking Republican member, accept the president.